Life is a journey made up of experiences, some good, some bad, some happy, some sad. We may all be different, but we are connected to the fact that no matter who we are, our stories all have hills and valleys. And tonight we dedicate this episode to those who have broken free and have become stronger. Welcome to Simso Session. and welcome to the show. Tonight we are talking to recording artist Michelle Downer, who you may better know as The Angel. She's been fighting perceptions and dealing with struggles for years. You can join in tonight's conversation by using the hashtag SimSoulSessions. So before we talk to Michelle though, we're going to check in with Roshane Dottyberry, who was our guest during season one of the show to see how he's been since we were in this safe space together. So we're gonna check in with him right now. Rashid, what's going on? Um, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. I'm doing okay. I'm just gonna fight some paint smell, but everything is good. P fighting some paint smells because you're making new your place. You're, you're, you're rebirthing your, your home. Yes, yes, yes. I like <laughs> it, I like it because it kind of aligns with um, where you were in our discussion. We caught up after the show, we caught up in our Sim Social Sessions podcast and you yes. told me what's been happening since the show. Let's start with the fact that you almost cancelled on me that day because when you came face to face with what you were coming to talk about, you were not ready, you didn't want to do it, you didn't want to face that part of yourself, but you're glad you came. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Because um, I do understand the importance of basically, you know, talking about your feelings, sharing it. I'm somebody who bottles everything inside and I just want people to see me for the, the happy-go-lucky, chirpy person. I don't want to be confronted with my pain and my sorrows and this despair. This I don't want people to associate Dutty Bear with that. And so I keep it. I'm like, hey, when you think of Dutty Bear, it's supposed to be everything but um, sadness. It shouldn't be doom and gloom. It should be, you know, fun and, and humor. Right. But we weren't really talking sadness. We were talking about your life, which has some elements of rough patches, but that you've been working yeah. through. Um, mm. and, and, and so out of that, you got a, a lot of love. You got um, a lot of support. You built a, mm -hmm. a village and you built a community. We're going to talk about that a little bit. But first, tell me a little bit about the merger or the realization that you came to that Roshane and Dutty Berry are the same person and that they can coexist in the same space and that you don't have to be happy all the time and that you can show people who you really are some of the mm -hmm. time and how that's been going, especially in this new project that you have birthed. Yeah, so um, it, it's very interesting, really. I love to compartmentalize and um, I categorize everything and put them in different places and spaces. And no, I, 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 what, what's the word? Epiphany? Yeah. I, I can know. <laughs> yes, come on, big word. Whoa, <laughs> that's our <some> work. <laughs> you know, and so um, I basically was able to just um, merge both of these, um, you know, Barry and, 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 and Roshane and realize that, hey, people do love both of them. They can coexist. And it, it really is me. It's not me trying to put one part of me over the other. It is me. And even just my space now, where I'm realizing, say, hey, I'm also a creative. Like, I'm allowed to have a little bit of color in my life. Like, this is it. I'm really trying to combine everything now. And it's working out so far. I have my second channel that is called Dutty Berry Uncut. And it has been such a journey trying to give myself outside of the countdown, outside of the animated voice. But uh, it has taught me a lot. And, and so far, people are warming up to the idea of just Oh, I am, uh, you know, I love you, you know, wake I love up late and just being, uh, you know, <laughs> very much all over the place. You're being a productive member. What's funny to me is how you said when you were getting that particular vlog off the ground, how you had to do so many takes over and over again because delivering as yourself was so hard. 
Yeah, Just being you was, was so hard. So rehearsed. So, so, so rehearsed. <laughs> so, wow. That's so amazing. Rehearsed. Let's talk about the village that you formed out of Simso Sessions. Tammy was your inspiration for the session mm. you came on to talk about when she talked about just returning to yourself and being who you are, loving who you mm -hmm. are. But you've also formed a friendship with Dalton Harris, mm -hmm. interestingly mm -hmm. enough, because mm -hmm. a lot of what he was going through is stuff you were going through as well that you haven't really spoken about either. Yeah, yeah, he's a lot more vocal, you know, with, you know, when he came on and, and spoke about like just the, the, the situation with like family and I was just like, oh my gosh, this is, this is, this is, this is intense. Um, it's a lot more, you know, than, than what I went through, but I didn't have that, I didn't have that, that, that space to really talk about my pain like that because, you know, the Jamaican thing is that boy, you know, you know, for really talk about them something you kind of look like you embarrass the family and you said bad things. And so you keep it to you and, you know, you do love your parents, but it's very hard to kind of hold them accountable for if you, if you felt away. And, you know, through all conversations, kind of found out, say, hey, oh, it, 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 it's okay for that to happen. Um, my mother, you know, we've had conversations and, um, I'm not going to just lie like mother love me like cook food you get me like she she, she loves me but we've had conversations now and, I, and i'm and, and i guess i can say that hey you know we're all imperfect beings i couldn't imagine being a mother um at that sort of age and with the responsibilities i might have i might have made some mistakes as well and to come to that realization i think is kind of allowing us to find that space where we can be like okay where do we take it from here so now I'm open to, you know, going to uh, a psychologist and to see what kind of healing that can happen. And it is so, it is so remarkable when you begin to, 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 to sort of have these conversations, how it, it just makes these changes in, in other areas of your life. Like, it's yes, so amazing. Yeah. Just, just, it, it literally just like lifts. I, I don't even know. It's like my world was just black and white. No, I know I can't see color. Oh, praise God. You couldn't have... Oh, my heart is full. Um, and yeah. I know you say when you start to work through that, you're going to share that in your vlog. So we're looking out for it. Rush, thank you so much for yeah, the check-in today. We're happy you are well. You look happy and you look like things are going well with your healing. And, you know, me, me love you like food too. So thank you for the time. <laughs> All right, take care soon. I know. I, I look at Rushi and smile now and I see the smile coming from his heart. Through his okay. eyes and i love that so that's roshane at dotty berry you can listen to that podcast in full by the way it's the same soul sessions podcast where roshane talks all about um the, the trials and the challenges with his mom and how he's working through that and so much more that we didn't get to talk about while he was here on the show so all the best to you rush when we get back now we enter the safe space with tonight's guest michelle downer you know her as the angel we're back with that after this. All right, good to have you back, everybody. Our guest is recording artist Michelle Downer, whose life as the angel has been one fraught with public struggle, some shame, wallop criticism, and enough embarrassment. And despite all of that, Michelle has carved out her space in music, emerging stronger than ever, even as the criticism continues today. So we're talking to her about all of that. And we welcome you, love, to our safe space. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. It's good. I'm so oh, you know, okay. you know, I had to say that. <laughs> you know, it, gives me the, it gives me that strength, that, I know, uh, you know, like I signature know. strength. <laughs> well, tonight we're going to talk about that strength and so much more. And w when I called you um, to talk to you about we, what we're going to talk about tonight, I'll get through some of the issues. You said to me that there's so many things that you've wanted to say, but you've just never... You've never spoken. You haven't talked about it. And you are ready now. Why are you ready now? Ah, oh, because I've healed and, and I've, I've gotten so much strength from it. And mm -hmm. I've healed. I'm, I'm healed. So my story can definitely heal someone else's story. Yes. And I won't say everything. Yes, I know. I know. <laughs> I know there's some things you're holding Most on to things. because you have plans. Yeah, I have um, plans to write to, a book. Yes, yeah. I know. All right. So let's start. I'm going to start here and then we'll go back. Um, you have a very strong social media presence. Thank you. We were talking the other day and you said, you posted, you made a post, you just snapped and you made a post. Yeah. Tell me what happened. Um, that post came, um, you know, when it comes on to me as a mom, I don't like people to conflict the angel with 
who Michelle Donner, Donner, the mother is. I'm going to try to drag me in a cascas that will definitely, um, you know, draw, you out. draw me right out. So I see where that was happening, where they were trying to um, get me involved in people's situation, people's relationship issues, and want to draw me into that, and, you know, trying to um, drag me as a mother, and that's where you hit me below the belt. So I just had to just come out and just vent, and, you know, Jamaicans, when we get mad, we just get mad. That's how it's, that's how it's, it's, it's our culture, it's a fooey style, that, so... You know, I just had to just vent, and that's just me personally, and I'm not easily drawn out, but that, I just had to just come out and just say my piece. It may just, it may come off wrong to a lot of persons, but at the end of the day, I just set it and forget it. I just did it and move on to what I was doing. You don't, you don't regret having made it? No. Hmm. I just, hmm. I had to get it off my chest, and there's no right or wrong way of getting things off your chest. You have to just clear your, clear the ear, feel comfortable, and move on, and you just deal with the repercussions after that. Yeah. And I, I just thought that, I just had to just do that. And as, as, as I said before, I don't hold anything. I just did it spontaneously and move on to what I was doing for the rest of my day. Never hold up my day or nothing. So <laughs> well, that's, the, that's the place you're in now of, of strength that you talk about. But when you say cascas and people drawing you in, Michelle, cascas has kind of been your life. I mean, you say you, you grew in Spanish town, you was climbing tree and you got river. Everything. And you, you had dreams of being an entertainer, but your life never really started to nosedive per se mm -hmm. till you moved to town yeah. and started to chase the dreams that yeah. you wanted. Yeah. Um, and from that time, it's like cascas has been your friend. I know, I know. And I've, and I've dealt with it and I've overcome and, and it has gained me strength and a lot of songs, hit songs um, that resonate with a lot of women all over the world. So, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. But it's like when you try to um, draw out the, 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 me as a mother, you don't, I don't run the joke when it comes mm. on to me as a mom, mm. as a parent. So when you are dragged that in a you know, situation and I try to make me out to be somebody that I'm not, I'm just living my peaceful life, doing my, going about my daily business and then you try. So I, I, so I think that was just my only issue. So I don't care about... Cascas, because as I say, Cascas has been my friend <laughs> ever since I, I, I started on my pursuit to success. Right. Uh, I, ever since I've moved to Kingston and chasing after my dream, dreams, Cascas has been my friend. But when I drag the mother in the Cascas, you will hear me out. Tell me about the Michelle in Spanish town before you got to Kingston. When did you know that you wanted to sing, that you were, I mean, you were doing it in your community. Sing. Yeah, <laughs> you're born as well. Born as sing, from the come out of my mom's womb. I was born to be everything that I am. Growing up in Spanish Town, um, hmm, I, I'm like that daughter that knows what she wants. I go to church. I, I organize myself. Mommy don't have to say, get ready for church. Me no for bed. Put on my clothes and I put on, I mean, get ready for church. Um, I'm always involved in everything. In school, I do. Um, if I egg me not the red, mm -hmm. it, I'm always the one to to participate in performing arts, if it's singing, if it's modeling, if it's community um, entertainment, performances in the community, because they used to have like concerts where competitions and every little competition I'm in it. If I'm singing, if I'm modeling, if I'm acting, every little thing, I'm, I'm always, I always want to be a part of it. I, I also went to um, Young Women Christ YWCA, they, they were doing like uh, performing arts there. And I, I, you know, I went there, um, I did creative dancing, so I can dance creatively. Mm. I do creative dancing, jazz, folk, pop, dance, all. So you were always into We used to do skits. We used to travel out of um, my mom, because um, they used to support me, like, they still support me. It's like, every woman go there, there, um, teen splash. I mean, we used to perform all over the place, and, um, I, and, and I do skits, like, um, yeah, like acting. Right. Because I love that. So well, we used to do a lot of that. So everything, you're doing some yeah. of those on your, on your Instagram page, yes, right? Yes, I'm going up and all of that. Yeah. But, but then <laughs> you came to town and you, and you decided you wanted to do the music and you just happened on that journey to meet some people who would become an integral part of your life. Can I tell you? For better or for worse. Yeah. Your relationships. Through sickness and health. Have been through <laughs> sickness and health. And death Maybe not till death Death will you. not do us part. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not till death. <laughs> Um, do your part, but your relationships have played out very publicly. And I think that's something I want to talk to you about a little bit more on the other side, mm -hmm. about what you've taken from that, because that was a tough, tough time. It was a tough in time. Your life. I came into Kingston for modeling, actually. Born with the talent of music, but I never came to pursue music. I came, I, you know, I was going to Ducks Business College at the time, and um, a modeling agency scouted me. 
you know, um, I always love to do modeling and I started out modeling. Anyway, I, I want to sing too. So my music journey has actually made me get fame. Yeah. <laughs> my hit single, Living Uptown, Downtown Girl. Yeah. Um, because I don't town girl living in uptown life. life. Yes. Independent, <laughs> I mean, I want one wife. Mm -hmm. Yes. My, yeah. my music is prophetic. <laughs> And I, and I guess I spoke that into being. I know, right? <laughs> Look at that. Like, well, interestingly enough, you, when you were trying to get into the music, your significant other at the time did not want you to, and I think that pushed you even further towards it. We're going to talk today, Angel, about those relationships and about that progress in her career and about some of the obstacles she faced, which were many, um, and some more with the other side of her, not the entertainer, but what she's gone through as a person and as a parent on the other side of this break. We'll be right back with more on SimSoul Sessions. All right, welcome back to the show, everybody. We're back with Michelle Downer, AKA D'Angel. I'm talking to Michelle tonight though, I think. Um, good to have you with us, madam. Thank you for having me. So <laughs> let's pick up now. So you're back, you're, you're, you're in Kingston and you're pursuing your dream of music. Your first relationship with Rodney, Bounty Killer. He didn't want you in music. At all. At all. At all. But you pushed anyway. Yeah, because he met me as a model, but um, I always tell him, like, you know, I can sing. So he, he knows I'm passionate about singing, so he always hear me as singing. I say, mm. you know, not bust me. You know, bust, no? And he's always saying, nah, I don't want it in the music industry because it's really rough. Mm -hmm. And, like, I'm saying in my back of my mind, who is you to tell me that? I, my career will God give me, you know, along me I sing. So he's like, my... my, my, my my, my, my subconscious mind always telling me other things when people tell me I'm not, you know? I'm always saying I am and I am going to do it. So I think that was kind of a tug of war in our mm -hmm. relationship because I wanted to pursue music. He was really encouraging me not to because he rough. I want to, I want to be able to trod, to trod my path and my journey and make my book ups and drop and get up back and all of these things. I yeah. know I, I want to go, go through my path of everything and learn and grow and go through my roughness, you understand? And, and that was one of the reasons that relationship didn't work out, but there were also very public issues of abuse and, um, you know, eventually that relationship went so the what? way it went. Yeah. Um, uh, and, and, and I want to know what you took from that because that was when a lot of the, the dragging started. No, from... it never started when I, when I, when I had to... Um, separate myself from Rodney. Nobody His knew. Fans there was no nothing. I just materially made a decision that I've grown from this relationship and I'm moving on with myself because I wanted to pursue my music. I wanted to pursue my dreams. And I, when I did Living Uptown in 05, he was like, okay, you're determined. Okay, I do your thing. And he wasn't like supportive. And I, I, and I said, I'm it. I felt proud because that song is instantly hit. Mm -hmm. So I felt good and I, and I had to just make a choice. So at that time, it was a lot going on, but I had to just choose me. Yeah. And I chose me. So, so then nobody had nothing to say because I'm just a model, no music, I know an artist and whatever. So I'm just living my life, living my dreams. I never listen to the excitement. But that. a lot of people had stuff to say about the fact that you had gone through the abuse and by then it had become public. They so didn't, how did you they didn't start know what I was going through because it wasn't public and I didn't speak about it. Yeah. So they, they were just assuming. Remember saying, me and Rodney never used to fight, I run up and down and all these public things. It, it wasn't public. I'm, trust it me. It didn't play out it in never public, out Michelle, in public. people knew. Yeah. And so it was out there and you are trying to build this reputation now and you're getting your taste of what fame is like yeah. and the fact that you can't live your life in, in, in private. Yeah. So you, you, on one hand, you're getting to where you want to go with your music, but on the other hand, you're realizing that fame comes with some other trappings. Yeah, and, and it was. Yeah. It was. It was because they're trying to look at me to say, all right, then let's see what you can do because they're saying, oh, this is Bounty's ex-girl. Um, hmm, we not accept it, so I think I saw this thing go. We want to see what you can do. And I, and I was ready to show them what I can do. I, I'm so determined and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm just blessed with the opportunities. I just wanted to, I'm very competitive from my child. So I'm like, you, I, you want me to show you what I can do, then I'm going to show you what I can do. So from, from, from then, I've just been showing and doing and mm -hmm. just still pursuing my dreams. So then you, you got married. Big, yeah. big. <laughs> Big deal. I remember ER now and watching the, the <laughs> clips from the wedding where you're 
you know, royalty, getting married to Beanie Man, D'Angelo and Beanie Man together. What a dreamlike wedding and a dreamlike state. And this is beautiful. And then it worked for a bit and you had Marco Dean and then... Plops. Plop. Plops. <laughs> Did you just say plops? Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Um, and wow. that too played out in public. Yeah. And uh, that was, mm, that was like the best and the worst time of my life. Um, the best thing was my son, Mark Edine. I love you, son. I love you. <laughs> uh, the driving force of my life. And, uh, oh, that's Marco. Cool. Mm -hmm. So I just thought that. Ah, just my life overall is a journey, and I and and I think it's just uh, uh, a testimony. Can I say uh, it's a testimony of my life? So I have no regrets of nothing. So when I was going through that, I I, I never understood what was going on because at that time, um, you want to talk about the marriage or the or the breakup? Which one? The, what was the marriage like? The marriage was what beautiful. Let, yeah. The marriage was beautiful. Um, a lot of people, you know, in I say it all work, it now go work. I mean, the fans of of um, my ex was saying it now go work, and whomever else, because you know, at that time people are what well, people and they're sensitive, and people will say whatever they want to say. So I think a ninety percent of people uh, from both ends and all over was saying this now go work, and you know, I'm saying it will work, and uh, you know, my ex was is saying it will work, and. We're just going to have to work this together, you know? Because when you fail is when you allow people to let you fail. So I wasn't about that, you know? And not even in my marriage, I wasn't about that. So um, we took our hands in, he took my hands in marriage. And um, it wasn't uh, a, a, a situation of getting back to anybody. I, 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 I moved on from um, Rodney a year. I was on my own doing my thing, doing my music, being happy and just living me and just living my best life and pursuing without anybody telling me you can't do this or you can't do that or do that the way they are, do that the way they are. If you do it the way they are, you'll be fine or if you don't do it the way they are, you're not going to be fine or whatever. But I just didn't want to do me. So I just started out to do me. I met Moses through music. We started out to do music. Um, all of a sudden, he just started telling me, same like me. He said, like me how? <laughs> <laughs> Start switch the thing now from music now to you like me. So I say you like me as an artist. Because people always say you're talented and um, those bars that you hit, because we, we did one man, oh, one man, we got oh, one man, one man alone, kind of right. So when I did that eight bar with our breath, he was like, you're talented man, because I was in the back of my mind, I just want to show people how talented I am and not just a face or not just an association with um, a a, a prominent figure in the dance hall space. I just want to show them that I am talented and I'm, and I'm ready for this. Um, so we, we get together for music and then, and then love, love starts. Mm -hmm. He proposed to me um, so quick um, to be, you know, for, for me to be his wife. And um, How long were you married? At, at the people? time. We never married long. How, how I shot this marriage this. How long were you married? But he remember. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure it's not even significant. <laughs> I cannot. Well, I cannot. Two years. And and the breakup was married, very public, very nasty. We were married. Uh, we married. How long? We married. We got married in two thousand and six, um, the year that Marco Marcadine was born, and mm -hmm. um, um, I, I broke free in two thousand and ten. How long that? You broke free. Yeah. You hear what you just said? Yeah. I broke free in two thousand and ten. You were in prison. Did it feel I was like living my life too much for the public and too much about what people want to say and making things look good when it's not, you know, just for the cameras and the lights and the action, like a, like a movie, like a TV, like, a, like it's not even a real life. And then when the camera and the light turn off, <clears throat> I have to be back to the reality. So I never want to do that no more. So I, when I sang Break Free in 2010, that's when, that's when I broke free. I remember... <clears throat> We're going to talk about the breaking free part of it. Um, stronger. We're going to talk about um, the breakup and how she's moved on since. Other side of this break. Soon come. All right, so we are back. And when we left, we were talking to 
Michelle, about the marriage falling apart. Um, you said you, you thought you knew who you were marrying. You wanted the white dress. You wanted the wedding day. You wanted the children. Yeah. You wanted... I dreamt of that. You I dreamt of it. Up, I said, oh, you know what? I want to get married before I have a child. And I wanted this and I wanted that. And that aspect of it was fulfilled, thank God. And, mm -hmm. you know, I got married, you know, in wedlock. Yeah. And my son, I have an amazing child, 14 years old, teenage son. And I'm really thankful for that. So... But when it fell apart... Um, I remember when we were talking this week, last week, whenever we prepared for this, you actually broke down on the phone because you said, you said, Simone, if people ever know mm -hmm. when we got through them, we would never believe. And you just said to me that you never knew you could go through what you had gone through and still be here. Um, as a matter of fact, you're still reeling from the narrative mm -hmm. from the breakup because people are saying, it's you. Yeah, yeah, they would, they would understand. And people are like that. They never tend to give women a chance. You understand? Period in whatever sector that you are. They try to tear down women more than men. When men do the things, they, they try to shield them and protect them and, um, and always, um, they, try, they try all the time to be the victim and push you underneath one rug. So, because I think it's because of um, my former relationship that I've been through and then, you know, moved on to somebody else um, in the same um, industry. field, industry. So I think I, that was a stereotype from dear. So like they must say, we are not with she, we are not for the with she. But at the end of the day, I don't make choices in my life. It's God lead my order my steps, you know. A father God order my steps, you know. And I eat me tend to work with. So when I was accused of infidelity, that was the worst thing ever up to now. That was the worst thing ever anybody could has ever done to me. I'm a marriage. And me say God from a little, from a little bit. I tell you, I go to church every Sunday. My mother is Christian. So I value certain things. I don't, come, I don't play with God because God run rough. You understand? So when you, when you go marriage, it's, it's a covenant with God. So you can't, you can't go around that. I just did C-section with my child. Women out there, ladies out there, women out there, we know. When you do C-section, you can't have a walk good. I just figure out. Mm -hmm. with man. You can't even walk good. So I was healing through that process. And um, my ex-husband at the time just didn't want to live him life. You understand what I say? He just didn't want to live him life. And he, he was caught out there with a woman, publicly. But now I say who she is, because she never even hear her dear to me. You understand? And, it turned, and that was turned around on me. And I had to deal with it. And no matter what I say, I'm the woman heal my C-section and I take care of my young people who just born. And when I, see, when I saw that come out publicly, I had to deal with that. And when I heard that, my sister, like my, my, um, my big sister, called me and said, don't watch, don't watch um, um, CVM, don't watch CVM. Because whatever was on it. Whatever was on it. So don't watch it, don't watch the show because I'm saying, yeah, watch it. She said, don't watch it. I'm saying, I have to watch it. Um, at the time, I was broken because I'm hearing that we see your husband uh, uh, wherever with this woman. I shouldn't even look good. <laughs> and you know, I, I go, she looks so bad. And, and, and look at you. And I say, hmm, wow. And the media start calling me, them see my husband. And I say, so they ask, what is happening? I say, I don't know. The same thing you are seeing is the same things I'm seeing. And they start tearing him down. So you can do all that. She looks so baby. So it was an orchestrated plan thing to just be the victim and just come out on me to say, Ashi, I don't and, and no matter what you said, nobody no, would listen. Nobody. When I watched an interview and I, 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 I heard that I'm, me um, was, was unfaithful, unfaithful in my marriage, it shocked me. It's like it could have killed me, you know. But then anyway, some things just lick you down, kill you on spot. You said you wanted but to I, run out of your skin and you I, felt like you were losing your mind. Because I'm shocked. Like, I was so shocked. I mean, I said, if you want to come out of the marriage, just go on the man and tell the life on me. You understand? So I, I took that in and I said, I have to go fight now. Because I have that warrior spirit in me and I have that fighter spirit, but I never knew that I have to go through. I have to, I have to go fight the world now because I said, I lie my tail. So I have to just tell them to lie my tail. And I just thought it was that easy. Mm -hmm. This is a big icon. Mm -hmm. Them look at me as nothing. Like, me was, I have never had a name for myself. You understand what I say? I just did have one song, Living Uptown, Downtown Girl, whatever. And in, in this 
to battle the relationship, then move on, and then, you know, is, is the world too favorite? I wasn't, I, I was just a normal person coming from Spanish Town. I, I never had a name, and I couldn't fight nothing against them two icon here. It's like, I couldn't do it. You and said, the fans tumbled down for me. The fans yeah. tumbled down for me. I wanted to explain, I tried to explain, but they now not listen. They, they believe what they believe, and I say, you know what? People who love me believe, know the truth. I know the truth, and the truth shall set me free. And me just, me just say, what me I go do? What me God, what me I go do? And him said, just continue the way you do. Continue to do your music. So I said, the, the, the man go listen to my music, and him say, just speak your truth through your music, and just express yourself through your music. Well, even your, even your career, it started, in fact, because you started to do your shows, you would be booed off shows. Every way me go, them boo me. Every way me go, them boo me. It was like a, it's like an everyday thing. If me go to a road, people turn up their nose. They, they just say words, unkind words to me. I remember I say, I have to live a normal life because I have a son. So I have to take him to school, I have to do normal things. I have to go to the supermarket, I have to do things. And me with my brave self, I do, I go out there and face it, you know. I face it, you know. I don't hide, you know. Because I say I never do nothing. So when I get booked for shows, um, last of income, every, every bad things do me. When I get booked for shows, people just come out for just terrorize me. They must come out for support me and love me. They must come out for boo me. How did you get to that? Yeah, I go boom for something I never do. So, so basically, I just held on to the fact that I'm gonna get you some tissue. You said if it wasn't for the grace of God, we dead and gone. And your family, dead gone, or mother or something. Well, you're here. So <laughs> when, me, when me go out there, they might boo me now. It's like me, I say, well, now boo me for me doing something. It's like me just want to stand up to them. Like me, I say, well, now boo me for me doing something. And then me, I say, one day, you know, will accept me. Bet you. It's like me, I look upon the crowd and me, I say, bet you one day, you know, if you accept me. Randy, I'm going to ball again. So I'm going to your first year. <laughs> yes, girl. <laughs> <laughs> yes, girl, get it out. Get yes, it all out. Yes, I get say, it all out. I say, what do me for? I'm going and I sang them same way. And they boo me, I'm in the business. And I say, better one day you don't have to accept me. Because you don't boo me, I'm not doing nothing. You don't know nothing. And me would just sing to you boo in the business, you know. I just never care. I just sing to my boo. And I just say, all right, I feel good now. I'm going up on the stage. One time I go on show. Um, I think it's in Maypen or Mandeville, and, the prom and somebody that was a part of the show come to me and say, Angel, don't go up on the stage, you know. The people them say, I'm going to boo you. And I say, yeah, I'm go up on the stage. He said, no, man, nobody work tonight, man, because they said, I'm going to boo you. They plan for boo you. I said, I'm going out there, make them boo me, because I do them something. I'm going out there, and as my name, Carl, welcome on. They, nah, they, they, they weren't booing me for my talent. They must have booing me because of the fact and the... The whole thing that is alleged and this said mm. and the whole thing. Uh, and what got there? Welcome on stage, D-A-J, boo! I'm going to walk out in the boo. And I just say, tell the bad man, say hello. They met them whisper when they talk and I hear me smile. Come and know to myself, say, I got me love and everything is for a while. And then I try to come stop my future and my career, them want for style. Me tell them me walk and me talk with God in my heart. None of them can't stop my style. Well, I ain't tell me that me are the artist of the future. Mm. Not for them, I know me would have an entertainer. And I me not me me listen to them, you know. I sing. They babu me, you know. But I am singing. Anyway, I should have never gone so good for me. <laughs> I'm never gone so good. Sure. <laughs> never gone so good at all. <laughs> Family, I pray, me, I pray. People love me, I pray. <laughs> there are some people who um, reach out to me, um, advise me, give me good encouragement, whatever. But them can't stop me from getting boo. All right. I hear you. Hold that part of the story. Um, you mentioned... Um, your family. God and your family are two constants that you talk to me about so many different times because you said if you never had them, you wouldn't get through. And your family um, has sent some words of and love. And friends. Sent some, some words of love for you. So let's go.
What? <laughs> I just want to tell you I love you. I've known you for over 20 years and I want to let you know I admire everything about you. Keep being strong. Keep continuing to be a great mom. And keep being a mad friend and a great friend to me. I want to say thank you for always being here for me. You know, I mean, one of the many things I can always say is that that positive energy that you you, you have inside you is pushed out to everyone around you. And that vibrant personality, it, it rubs off on everybody. And I mean, thank you for being so bold and opening the doors for many persons like myself. You brought a whole different experience to my high school years. One thing I've always said and will always say you were born to be a star. You knew you had that talent and the difference it would make to the world. You're full of fun, you're crazy, but most of all, you're lovable. Be angel, big up yourself. Be angel, I don't know where to start, but let's start. Lady a dancer, a mother, first lady, everything in our hand. Be angel, big up yourself. I cannot talk about Angel without smiling or laughing because Angel is the funniest girl that I know. What intrigued me the most about Angel when I met her was her ambition and I could relate to her. Um, she's a very, very ambitious person. She will work, work, work. And throughout everything, what I admire the most about her is her strength. You know, I just admire how strong of a woman she is and how she has never given up. One of the things that she's a go-getter, um, she's a true woman of God. To say that I love her, um, she's crazy and um, I love working with her. <laughs> I'm so happy for her growth in who she is as a woman, a mother a sister, a friend, a businesswoman, continue to rise bars. Some may find fault, but it's better that you find something to do than to sit and not do anything. Michelle, thank you so much for over 30 years of friendship. I love you so much for all the selfless things you do, the way you love and care for everyone around you. You're such an amazing mother to Martha Dean, an amazing daughter to Miss Pansy. I've watched you grown so much as a person over the years, both in your career and personal life, and I am extremely proud. I am so proud of you, girl. I love you, Michelle. Michelle, I love you. You know you're a very loving person. You're kind to us. You give us everything that we need. And I just thank God. I ask God to bless you and keep you and in everything that you're doing. You, you love everybody. You are always there for us. You care for people. You give care package, you give them food. You do all kind of stuff. So I just thank God for you and I love you and big up yourself and enough love. She's such a blessed person. She's caring, she's giving. She always looks about us. Anywhere she is that you call her, she's always there for us. Even People call her and to say that they're in need of food stuff. She would go an extra mile for them, that they could get those food to eat. And I love her so much for the things that she do for us. God bless her. In big up yourself, Mama ENG. We love you, we appreciate you, and we respect you. And as you always say to me, Rick Wack, Yanatan. ENG, Yanatan. Don't worry about what people have to say. Do you continue? Um, growing from strength to strength and continue to empower your fellow sisters. That's all I have to say. Love you. Bye. Continue doing what you're doing and you're doing a good job. Continue to shine, my friend. Love you dearly. Keep growing, keep shining, and continue to be strong and never ever give up on your dreams. I love you. The angel, big up yourself. Friends forever. <laughs> Strong support wow, system there, lady. Wow. And, that, and that to me was just my team that's been there with me from day one. It was the person who loved me the most and knows me best. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We're going to take a break. We'll come back with more to wrap the show up right after this.
Welcome back to the show, everybody. As we put our lid on, it's our final segment with the angel, Michelle Downer, who is now, as we can see from what she said, in a stronger place. Does that mean that you are healed and whole, or is it still a process and a journey? No, man, I, I'm, I'm healed. When I, when I share little things, I'm just sharing it um, so I can help others to, 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 make be to, to, know, to be better, you know, for yeah. themselves. And um, all I can say, I... I'm, I, I just always try to do the best in every situation. There's nothing I can change about people or situations I can't change. I just try to be the best. Best you. You, yeah, me. I just try to be the best me and just be the best mom. Sometimes I have to wear both, both caps for yeah, my son. Yeah. And, that's, and that's okay. You understand? And in doing that, you've had to do some reinvention. COVID means no bookings, no shows. Um, your social media page, you, you started to do some, some different ventures. Um, you posted a, a picture the other day, you posted a picture the other day and came under a lot of fire for it. Which one? Um, the one on OnlyFans. Oh. Um, but when I spoke to you about that, you said to me, Simone, I have to figure out how I'm going to earn for my child and people will be judging me no matter what mm -hmm. I do. I remember a long skirt, them judge me, so it not really matter. And I, I always say event appropriate. I come in on the show, I couldn't wear a short skirt. Legs for days, but I couldn't because it's not that kind of event. You understand? Event appropriate. I always say people understand that. I, I had to do what I have to do, you know, I have to do what I have to do because I have my son, I have my family to take care of. Um, so when people judge me, I don't really care. I've been getting judged forever from the inception, from a come out in the music from 2005. People judge me up until no. You understand? So it doesn't really phase me. I just say, me have to do, me have to do because who is talking would, I, would, would not fit one of my bills on any given day. They would rather tear me down and warm me so far and dash. But that will never happen. That will that never. will we'll never live to see that. Never live to see that. You'll never. But the new, the new narrative now is that you <laughs> have lost your mind. Because some of the things you post. You lost your mind. You lost your mind. You she don't take her meds. What kind me, of crazy me video this? Mad, me, 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 me lost my mind. I must say you lose my mind. My initial is M.A.D. But you've so heard it. My, my initial is M.A.D. So I can live with that. I've heard it. And it doesn't even mean nothing to me. If I never lose my mind in 2006, eight, when I was um, going through the worst of my career, if I, 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 when the whole world tumbled down for me, I was accused of inf infidelity and... The worst things ever. If I never lose my mind then, how if I lose my mind now when I'm just living me and doing me and like, living my best life and enjoying myself? Look for me, go look like somebody that lose their mind. Look for me. Just look. Look, me say. Look. Look what girl look good, clean and nice and tidy and blessed. I'm so blessed. Stress free. Them not happy like me. Who's that kind of mind? I'll be just ready for them. But let me, let me ask you, because you say you used to look at pictures back then and say, Lord, I'm nice, I'm a pretty, I'm a... But you say when you look at those pictures now, you were ugly and maga yeah. and drawn. Yeah. But when you look at yourself oh, now... I'm looking at a fabulous woman, ready, yes, ready to mingle. Anyway. I'm does it like really, I'm, does it I'm really, really just... I'm not, I'm not, back then, when I thought I was... I, you know, I was fighting, I was going through what I'm going through, my emotions, going through my stress, going through my pain, going through everything. I think I look good. But looking back, I never look good, man. I was scarred, you know. I was empty, I like an empty barrel. But when I look at myself now, I'm, I'm looking even younger than how I used to look before. And what gave me that strength is when I sang Stronger in 2008, when I sang Stronger. When I sang Stronger, People start reach out to me in every sector of the world, every kind of woman. Don't look at yourself to say, oh, I am going through this because me have fault and me not this and me not that. We all go through it. It doesn't matter how you look. It doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter. And stronger has, you know, has, has, made, me, has made me realize that type of people that may reach out to me in my DM and say, wow, I'm going through the same thing because Stronger is actually a, like an autobiography of my mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. it's Talking true, about what you went through. What I went through and to see how it changed and impacted on so, mu so many women's lives. And even, even up to today, the year, Stronger is, uh, is still strong. Um, strong. <laughs> uh, still strong. So now when you hear all of this, it's just noise. Nice. And it, it, it just, nice. just kind of... It means nothing to me. It means nothing to me because I've been there, done that. That's an incredible place to be. That is a great place. I'm at peace. So I can tell people my mind. I don't care. 
Because <laughs> I'm at peace. And I can express myself. But, and, I, and I tend to just you know, put, 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 express myself through music, as I said before, because I think music is what really saved me. Stronger, then we got break free. Of course, I, went, I did Blaze in 2007. When I was in 2008, I think I did Blaze and Stronger, same time, bop, bop, bop. I just wanted to show, show people that I'm a model, I'm a runway, I'm a this, I'm a that. It's like I'm always just pushing my, my envelopes, just, 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 just doing me because I am so talented. I never bury any of my talent. I have about eight talent. I'm going to bury none. Yeah. Since the COVID, I start showing people how, how humorous and crazy I am. You see all my friends, them say me crazy? Yeah, but so not crazy if you're not garbage, but not insane. Yeah. I'm just fun and full of life and bubbly and happy. And, living, goes, and living the way you want to I live. I live the way I want to live. Exactly. So the rest is the best. Yes. And your best days are ahead. Oh, yes, definitely. I'm glad you come sit down There's so today. much things oh, happening for good. me. And I won't even expound on it too much. I have my EP working on now. Um, you know, mm, so it's a blessing. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to take my next step. I'm mean, going to ask Father God to just continue to lead my steps, order my steps, and I'll, and I'll follow. And I think I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm leading, I'm, I'm going through my, right, my righteous path. Mm -hmm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff will comfort me. And prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Yeah, so no see me. Cup this is running place, over. Yeah. Cup I run over and all these things. See me? I'm glad you came Ready and sat up. with me today, Michelle. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so me. much. <laughs> Um, we'll look out for the book when it comes, because we know it is coming. And with that, we're going to put our lid on tonight's show with our affirmation. So let's get our music up and dim our lights and give you some soul food to leave for today. So everything in our life happens for a reason. It is left for us to figure out what the reason is. And if we can't see the reason, to figure out the lesson. Every negative situation can lead to a positive, life-changing outcome. But it takes a positive mindset to say, I will take what has hurt me and turn it into good for my life. So look at your circumstances and say, never failure, always a lesson. And then you can, as somebody said, make your mess your message. Move from that place of immobility and move into the magic of the mercies you've been given and the magnitude of your blessings and claim your breakthrough and break free. And when you get off that battlefield, be sure to tell yourself, soldier, you are strong. Tonight we affirm, I am a general on the battlefield of life and victory is mine. Thank you again, Michelle, for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. That's such an inspiration. Oh, gosh. Yeah. We're going to be here again next week, everybody, with another amazing story of the power of the human spirit. Until then, every blessing. And remember to count your blessings. Take care.